Welcome to another in the Deso Systems webinar series on Daimola. I'm Michael Tiller, CEO of Exogeny Inc. I've been working with Medelica since 1999, and I've authored a number of books and papers on its use, primarily in the automotive industry. It's my pleasure to be working with Deso Systems to create a number of 20-minute webinars that explain why I think the Medelica language and Daimola, the Medelica solution from Deso Systems, provide such a compelling solution for modeling, simulating, and optimizing complex engineering systems. In this webinar, we're going to explore the different ways that Daimler can be used in the system engineering process. A model-based approach to system engineering is becoming more and more important when developing complex, multi-domain systems. Daimler can play an important role across the model development process. Let's start by introducing the system engineering V diagram. The V diagram is a common way of visualizing the system engineering process. The process starts by collecting customer or regulatory requirements at the system level. These system level requirements are then studied to understand how the system level requirements translate into requirements for the subsystems. This process continues all the way down to the component level. In this way, the requirements at the system level are used to formulate requirements for the individual components in the system. The left hand side of this diagram is the design side. Here, the requirements at each level are used to formulate a design for that level. The right-hand side of this diagram is the verification side, where simulations or physical tests are used to confirm that the requirements at each level have been satisfied by the design. This structure is the backbone of the system engineering process. System engineering is not specific to modeling, but it is useful to understand how different types of modeling fit into the system engineering process. For many types of analysis at the system level, 3D surface geometry is not yet used or even available. But inevitably, as designs become more detailed, 3D surface data must be incorporated into the models. When and where this 3D information is required varies, so while we don't know at exactly what level it will come in, we can be fairly certain it will play a role by the time we get to the component level. At levels where 3D geometry isn't required, Lumped system models are used. These kinds of models include design information like masses, lengths, compliances, and so on, but they don't require detailed 3D representations. These lumped system models are the kinds of models that Daimler is designed to work with. As we'll see as we progress through the system engineering process, Daimler's impact is felt throughout the system engineering and model development process. Once detailed 3D representations become important in predicting the behavior of subsystems and components, other types of modeling software are required. These tools are used to model spatially distributed behavior. Abacus, from Deso Systems, is an example of the kind of tool that would be used at this level to predict stresses, strains, temperatures, and so on. These predictions are based on detailed 3D geometry. Let's start our walkthrough of the system engineering process to examine the different places that Daimler can be used. The first place is at the system level. This is where the product development process starts, and it is common to explore different potential configurations or architectures at this stage. For example, in the automotive industry, many different vehicle types and powertrains are considered to see which ones are likely to satisfy customer demands for performance, fuel economy, and functionality while keeping emissions low enough to satisfy government regulations. Daimola provides a complete graphical user interface around the configuration management features of Medelica. These features allow developers to create a formal architectural description of their system and then create and maintain models of different system configurations. Exploring different configurations is as easy as selecting a given subsystem and selecting different options for that subsystem. These kinds of capabilities allow various configurations to be evaluated to see if they are likely to satisfy the system level requirements. If not, more exploration and iteration is performed until one or more satisfactory configurations can be identified. Once a set of viable system configurations have been identified, the process moves on to creating specific designs for the various subsystems. Daimler's multi-domain and acausal modeling capabilities are well suited for the creation of detailed physical subsystem models. In particular, at this point in the system engineering process, it is important that the models can predict the behavior of the subsystem that is being designed. 
It is essential that such predictive models are based on first principles approaches that use conservation of physical quantities like momentum, energy, mass, and so on. The advantage of a predictive model is that it is characterized in terms of design parameters like mass, length, resistance, and so on. The essence of being a predictive model is that if the model is validated, it should be able to do an accurate job of predicting the behavior of a range of designs. In other words, a good predictive model will yield accurate results for different values of the design parameters. This is essential for design exploration. Once a predictive first principles model of a given subsystem has been developed, the next step is to optimize the design of that subsystem to get the best possible performance from it. Such a model gives us the freedom to explore different designs, but instead of exploring the design space in an ad hoc way, we can leverage the optimization library in Daimler to formulate our design objectives, parameters, and constraints. In this way, the optimization library can efficiently explore the design space and find us the optimal design that satisfies our underlying constraints. At this point in the process, we are at the limit of what we can do with a lump system approach. Further design at this point needs to incorporate 3D surface geometry in order to accurately evaluate the performance of subsystems and components. However, Daimler still has an important role to play. Detailed 3D geometric models need boundary conditions before they can be used. One approach to formulating these boundary conditions could be to develop rules of thumb based on previous product iterations. However, the problem with this approach is that as new technology innovations come along, like hybridization in cars, they may be made obsolete. A better approach is to determine the boundary conditions from the Daimler models associated with those subsystems. For example, consider an automotive transmission. The input torque that the engine will supply to the transmission will depend on a range of factors that can be captured in Daimler models for the engine and transmission. Such models can give an accurate assessment of not just average torque output from the engine, but also how the torque varies over time and under various engine operating conditions. These kinds of boundary conditions will be much more representative of actual operating conditions for the transmission than a simple rule of thumb about average input torque. So at this point in the system engineering process, Daimler models of the system and subsystem can be leveraged to provide representative boundary conditions for subsequent detailed 3D analyses of the components and subsystems across engineering domains like mechanical, electrical, thermal, and so on. Using the 3D geometry and boundary conditions, the process of analyzing component level designs can progress to the point where the product design is complete down to the component level. Then the process transitions into one of verification. This starts at the component level where we use modeling to ensure that the component meets all of its performance requirements. But once again, we find ourselves at the boundary between lump systems and spatially distributed systems. The challenge we now face is that while we have geometrically detailed models of all of our components, it becomes computationally very expensive to continue to use these detailed models for the entire verification process. Ideally, we'd like to be able to reuse the lump models that were created on the design side to continue our verification. But because we had not performed a detailed design of the components, those models included characterizations of the components that were best estimates of how the final component designs would behave. For verification, we need to replace those best estimates with more accurate characterizations based on actual component designs. We can extract those characteristics from our detailed designs by designing experiments to evaluate those characteristics through a model reduction or calibration process. Once those characteristics have been extracted, they can be inserted back into our lump system models and we can accomplish many verification tasks quickly using these lump system models that now contain accurate representations of our component and subsystem designs. Once again, the optimization library can be used to support our system engineering efforts. The calibration features in the optimization library allow us to import data from testing or simulation of components or subsystems. Then we can use that data as the response we'd like to see from our lumped model of that component or subsystem. The optimization library can then calibrate the model by adjusting the model parameters to make them match the behavior seen in our baseline data for that component or subsystem. One thing we haven't really discussed in the context of system engineering 
is the functional mockup interface. As you may recall from other webinars, the functional mockup interface, or FMI for short, provides interoperability between tools by providing an API for the exchange of compiled models. This can be important in the context of system engineering because it supports many important use cases. For example, FMI is an excellent tool for combining controller models with the behavior of the physical system or subsystem. FMI can be used to support software in the loop, model in the loop, and hardware in the loop verification procedures. Another use case is to support co-simulation and interoperability with other tools. If you have created other subsystem models outside of Daimler, FMI provides a means to import and export these models between tools to support simulation of the complete system. Finally, FMI can be used to connect lump system and spatially distributed models. For example, this paper from the 7th Modelica Conference discusses how a Daimler model of an automotive brake system used co-simulation with Abacus to provide high fidelity predictions of the brake system function. An increasingly important verification step occurs when physical prototypes of controllers become available. Hardware in the loop testing is used to verify the function of these controllers. It is important to test these controllers over a wide range of operating conditions and situations. Installing the controllers in actual hardware and exploring all of these different operating conditions is impractical because of the sheer number of scenarios that need to be considered. Hardware in the loop testing provides a way to automate testing of hardware controllers by connecting them to simulations of the actual system that are so realistic that the controller doesn't know the difference. These simulated systems can be used to quickly evaluate many important test scenarios. But performance is critical for hardware in the loop simulations. The simulated system must be very detailed in order to accurately represent and reproduce the physical system. Generally, this means that reasonably detailed lump system models are required. However, these detailed models can be computationally expensive to simulate. But in order for a model to be practical for hardware in the loop simulations, it is important that it runs in real time. So here we see two conflicting requirements. On the one hand, we want detailed behavior to be captured in the model, which comes at a computational cost. On the other hand, we need these models to run in real time, so that to the controller they are indistinguishable from the actual system. Daimler is a popular tool for hardware in the loop simulation because of its exceptional code generation capabilities. For real-time applications, these code generation capabilities can be the difference between a model that works and a model that doesn't. Daimler benefits from a wide range of symbolic manipulation techniques. These techniques allow Daimler to explore different ways of solving the equations contained in system models to find the approach that provides optimal simulation performance. In addition to these symbolic manipulation techniques, Daimler uses state-of-the-art numerical solvers and integrators. There is a natural synergy and complementary relationship between the symbolic techniques and the numerical methods. This synergy gives Daimler a significant performance boost when compared to tools that only use purely numerical methods in their simulations. In conclusion, Daimler can be used throughout the system engineering process. Starting at the system level, Daimler can be used to do concept assessment by defining a system architecture and then exploring different architectural configurations. After deciding on the system configuration, Daimler's first principles approach to modeling supports creation of design-oriented models that can be further optimized using the optimization library. These first principles models can then be used to generate boundary conditions for finite element models, components, and subsystems. Once the design process is completed, these same finite element models can be used with the optimization library to fine-tune lumped models to more accurately reflect the behavior of detailed component and subsystem designs. Daimler's support for the FMI standard supports many important interoperability scenarios during the system engineering process. Finally, Daimler's advanced code generation capabilities can be used to support hardware in the loop applications for verifying controller module hardware. Thank you for your interest in Daimler. We hope you've enjoyed this webinar. If so, you might want to view some of the other webinars in this series.